Hi everyone! Welcome to the Knight of Swords video. I'm really excited today, so let's get started. Before we get going on the art portion, I just wanted to show off what the card we're doing looks like because I actually got it confused. If you saw my Arteza video, you know that we pulled what I called the Knight of Swords. But we actually pulled, I'm so silly because I forgot that this was a card in the tarot decks, was the Page of Swords. So because I said it was the Knight of Swords, I'm going to go ahead and do the Knight of Swords today, and then whenever I do the next tarot painting video, we'll go ahead and do the Page of Swords, so apologies about that. So going forward, I'm going to start showing off what each version of the card that we're doing in the painting looks like in each of my decks that I have. So for instance, I have two tarot decks. This is what the Knight of Sword looks like for both decks. They're really pretty, I like them. So on the left hand side, I have the tarot cards from my 78 Tarot Astrology deck. And then the ones in the middle are from my Nicolette Cecily deck. I believe she's an Italian artist. And then on the right, I don't have a set of Rider Waite tarot cards, but I just included it because I know they're the most popular, like people know the reference to those cards more. So I just wanted to include it so you know what those cards in particular look like. And then because for the full video I did not show you what each of my full cards looks like, here's what they look like. They're really cool. Okay, let's get going with the art. Alright, so now we're at the painting portion of this video. Before I explain the Nine of Swords, I want to explain how tarot cards are set up in general. So let's forget the Major Arcana, because the Knight of Swords is not part of the Major Arcana, let's just forget that. The Minor Arcana is literally set up like a regular deck of playing cards. There's four suits, so in Tarot, there's Pinnacles, Cups, Wands, and of course, Swords. In each suit, there are ten regular cards, and then four face cards. The Knight of Swords is one of those face cards. The face cards consist of the Knave, the Knight, the Queen, and the King. I would say the numerical cards, so cards 1 through 10, are more situational, and then the four face cards are the personality archetype cards. Since this is our first suit card, I should probably explain what each suit is, and I won't do all four in this video, let's just talk about swords. So swords are air signs. Air signs are typically known for being quick-witted, sharp-tongued, and to the point, and, and very intellectual, very communicative. The Knight of Sword in particular represents high ambitions. Knight of Swords types stand their ground and are very assertive. And with all of that being said, how do we relate this into an image? So when I pulled the Knight of Swords, I was kind of dreading it a little bit just because, and I knew this is how it would happen, swords are my least favorite. <laughs> I don't have any air sign in my chart. But anyways, I pulled the Knight of Sword and I'm like, hey, what am I going to do with this? Whenever I have an idea for a drawing, I typically kind of go with my first idea. I'll try to go out of my way to do different ideas, but I don't know, something about that first idea, it's like, my brain testers me until I execute it. Pretty much immediately, I knew I had to do a fairy, because fairies represent air and air signs. So obviously I had to do that. With all that being said, I'm going to let the audio breathe for a little bit, and I'll be back to explain the process of this piece.
So this is my first action piece, and because it's my first one, I do think I did a good job. And I feel like I rose to the challenge. So I decided that I wanted these two characters to help with the motion of the piece. I wanted one character to be coming out of the picture, and then another one coming into it. And honestly, I think that turned out really cool, and it's something I might try to implement in my piece going forward. I just think it's neat and unique, and I want to keep trying at it. I knew the pose for the fairy, like, I really wanted the fairy to be jumping up and having the sword going over its head. And I am proud of that, and I am also proud because I wanted to make an expression. Because as part of my anatomy sketches, I've been trying to get better at expressions. I still did a face. But unfortunately, it just kind of got lost in translation. So I will be inserting a picture somewhere, hopefully here, of what I wanted the face to look like because I was really proud of it. I was proud of the expression. In terms of the painting portion, I was really concerned with the piece coming out muddy because for my intro, I already experimented with the metallic paint and it ended up being just a metallic paint blob, which was fine for the intro, but for this actual piece of art, I didn't want it to get too muddy. So I decided to essentially do a mix of using the paint with colored pencil and just leaving like actual black paper coming through. I think it honestly worked out. This piece reminds me of one that I did in my 7th grade art class. In my class we were studying surrealism, so like a bunch of dolly and of that nature, which I really enjoy and we were told to you know create a piece of art. And the art was on black paper, which was awesome. But I do think I remember it being in colored pencils that I did mine, and I made it like a forest scene. And my idea was kind of like a Alice in Wonderland type of piece, so I had like a forest that was made out of Crayola colors? Crayons? Sorry, I say crayons really weird, but yes. So Crayola colors were trees, and then I had a lake that instead of an alligator being in it, I just decided a lion would be coming out of it, and then I had flying penguins. <laughs> and my my nan, my grandmother, says she didn't understand my piece, and I was like, that's okay, nan, like, I still enjoy the process. <laughs> it was cool to have this memory pop up because I did not remember doing that piece, so... Yeah, that was a lot of fun, and that's kind of where I took my inspiration for this piece. Also, I kind of struggle with the waterfall, like, the waterfall is where I went, dude, I don't know about this, because I kept putting down blue paint, but it keeps coming out white for whatever reason, like, I don't know if it was my camera, not picking up, but I swear, like, whenever I was putting the paint down on the actual paper, it didn't look blue at all, so I'm like, okay. But I think using the colored pencils actually helped it. I actually really like how my waterfall looks. It has an impressionist vibe to it, which I'm here for. I also kind of wanted to use the waterfall to tie in this piece with the full piece that I did back in April. I don't think I'll be doing a waterfall every time. I think each piece that I do a tarot card for like, we'll have an element of the previous piece, like, I feel like that would just be a cool thing, cool way, I should say, to tie things together. I'm really proud of how my rat came out. <laughs> I'm not one for rats, like, they're not my favorite, and I don't know why my brain was so set on this rat. I think rats are going to be another bog friend of ours, because we have a frog, and now we have a rat. I think the rat's cute, actually. I was really happy to be painting him, and I thought the purple looks really cool being put down on the paper. I think my favorite part about this whole piece and the whole process was... One, I really liked my idea of, you know, the characters coming in and out. I thought that was awesome. And then I just like how vibrant this came out, and I decided to use white highlighter pen to do, you know, the outlines and the face. Oh, also, to break up, you know, the metallic paint, like I said, I decided to keep the fairy's body, like, black. Like, I was really worried about painting into that. I thought it was going to be very illegible, so I just left it black and just did a white highlight, which I'm really a fan of. I think it came out really cool. Oh, and before I forget, so this piece was looking great right until the very end where I start to do a white highlighted border, and you'll see where uh, my ruler smudged it, and then I try to fix it, and I think I fixed it okay, but I was really annoyed because I was literally at the very end of the piece adding those border highlights, and then I just smudged it. Ugh, but that's okay. I do think we're winding down on this piece, though. So please like the video if you like tarot readings, and if you like tarot paintings, please let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more tarot painting videos, I'm really interested in what you guys think, so please let me know. Also, please don't forget to subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. And please don't forget that the links to my other social media is in the description box below, as well as the music I use. And I hope y'all are all having a great summer, please let me know how your summer's going, we're in the middle of it. 
and I can't believe it's almost the middle of July, like, that's just nuts to me. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great summer, and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.